In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your PC build for the first time. We're gonna go through things like how to set up Windows, how to install the correct drivers, how to make sure Windows is completely up to date, and then how to install each program that you'll be using, as well as the best settings to make sure it's optimized for top performance with the components that are installed in your build. Now, this video is a part of a larger series, so if you're just tuning in for the first time, I definitely recommend clicking the YouTube cards above and watching through that series if you're just going through this video right now for research sake. Now, if you've already completed your PC build and you're just simply here to learn how to set up your PC for the first time, then awesome. We're gonna go through that right now. And before we get started, I wanna go through a few things that you may run into when setting up your build that could kind of put you back a little bit. But if we approach them ahead of time, they won't be an issue for you. The first thing is MBR versus GPT. MBR stands for Master Boot Record, and GPT stands for Guide Partition Table. So these are two different formats, and I'm gonna include links in the description below for what the difference and benefits are, as well as what happens when your computer demands a GPT drive in order to boot, which I ran into in my last build, but you can easily convert that by using the Windows uh, disk image thumb drive that we're about to create to then get it into the disk utilities from Windows and convert that drive before ever installing Windows on your PC. So really, really awesome material. If you are unable to see your drives in the system or you're unable to boot to them because of MBR versus GPT. So very important. The second thing is the fact that sometimes once you get your computer to boot, one or two or three of the drives, however many you have in your computer, won't show up. And this is a common problem because you're missing the driver for that specific drive. For instance, I have a Samsung Evo 970, and I wasn't able to see that specific storage device because I did not have the updated driver installed. And so what I had to do was go to Google and search Samsung 970 Evo driver, and then download that driver, at which point I could access that drive. So that's another very important piece of the puzzle. The third thing is you cannot create the Windows disk image that we're about to create to install Windows from a thumb drive on a Mac OS device. It has to be from a Windows device. All right, the first thing we wanna do is get into the BIOS and make sure that all of our components are recognized. So we're gonna access our BIOS and the way you do that is by turning on your computer and then just tapping delete as your computer is firing up. Now, the first thing you wanna do once your BIOS pops up is navigate to where your memory frequency is and to optimize it for the maximum frequency that your RAM is approved for. For instance, my RAM is 2400, so I'm gonna switch it to 2400. But if yours is 3200 or 2667, convert it to that format in memory frequency, that way you get the most power out of your RAM and you're not wasting what you paid for. Next, we're gonna to toggle over to advanced and we're gonna to go to NVMe configuration since I installed NVMe drives into my system. And I wanna make sure that both of those drives are recognized. I see both of them here, everything looks good, so we'll keep moving forward. From there, I'm gonna to go to monitor and I wanna make sure that all of my fans are also being recorded. So as you see, I have CPU fan, I have chassis fan one and two, and I also have the fans down at the bottom that recognize the fans within the case as well. From there, I'm gonna to go to tool and access graphics card information, and that's gonna show me my GPU post. I'll click on that, and it tells me that I'm running the NVIDIA GPU in PCIe slot one, which means my GPU is recognized, which is a big win as well. So everything looks good, everything's being recognized, and the system looks to be set up correctly. Now I'm gonna head over to Google on my Windows laptop and type in Windows Disk Image Tool. I'll scroll down to the official Windows website that says Windows 10 Disk Image ISO file. I'll click on that, and I'll click Download Tool Now. Okay, once the tool downloads, plug in a thumb drive, open the file, and then follow the steps necessary to install the disk image onto your thumb drive. I recommend at least a 16 gig thumb drive just to make sure you have enough room, and I would format it before you actually do this install onto the thumb drive. So there's nothing else there, and it's just the disk image. 
Okay, so once the disk image is completely loaded onto the thumb drive, pull that out of your laptop or whatever other computer you use to create that image, plug it in to your new PC build, and hit the start button, at which point you should automatically be dropped into the Windows setup. It should recognize that drive as the drive that you're going to install Windows on and boot you right into this window where you can go ahead and start installing Windows. Click install now and it, it will go through the install process. At this point, you'll be asked to install your Windows key. I actually got mine from Newegg for a $50 discount, so I'll include that link in the description below if you would like to use that. Now, if you do use that link to make a purchase of that uh, version of Windows, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you guys. As always, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. So I'm gonna go type in my Windows code, and then I'll keep moving forward here through the steps. I'll accept the licensing and click next. Now I'm going to use the custom install. That just gives me the most customization because there's quite a few things that we don't want Windows to do when we're installing it on our build. And so we'll walk through those steps right now. I'm going to select my smaller 500 gig drive as my boot drive. And that is the KC2500. And it's going to go through its installation process, and I'll just skip ahead here for you guys so you don't have to wait on this too much. All right, now that everything's installed, it's going to reboot, and it will most likely reboot two or three times during the install process. I'll select United States, which is the country I am in. Click US keyboard. I'll skip the second keyboard layout. And uh, you don't want to connect to the internet now. Wait to connect to the internet. Just click the I don't have internet. Um, that is very important. And then continue with limited setup. We don't want a lot of these automated processes to take place uh, because we don't want Windows to do a lot of things that it does because it just kind of weighs down your computer and they're really not necessary. And you go ahead and set up your password and security questions. And after that, it'll drop you into the choose privacy settings. And we're going to turn all of these privacy settings off. We don't want Windows tracking us. Now, they're already going to track us, but we want to try and let them track us as little as possible. And then I'll click no uh, for do more across device with activity history. We do not want that because what happens is it'll pull information from other builds that you've had in the past. And we want this to be a fresh, clean install of Windows. All right, and now it's firing up. And we are going to go ahead and check for Windows updates. So I'll go in and type updates in the search bar and click check for updates once I get into the Windows updates page. And it's going to go ahead and run all these updates, search for new ones, make sure everything's up to date. Um, and then it will most likely ask for me to restart the PC. All right, restart required. So I'll go ahead and click restart now. And that will put my computer through the restart process. And then we will boot back into our home page again. All right, so now that the restart is complete, I'm gonna go back to check for updates again. And I'm gonna check for more updates. We wanna make sure the computer is as up to date as possible before we go ahead and start installing the other drivers necessary for the computer. Looks like everything is up to date. Let's just check one more time. It'll just give us another quick search. Very good. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and download Google Chrome. That is my preferred web browser. Um, so download your preferred web browser if that's Firefox or Google Chrome, whatever it might be. I use Chrome because I have a lot of Chrome extensions I like to use. All right, so now that we have Google Chrome installed, I'm gonna go ahead and search for the NVIDIA drivers for our NVIDIA 1660 Super. It'll take us to the NVIDIA drivers download page. I'll select 16 series, select the 1660 Super, and I'll select Studio Drivers. Since this is a video editing PC, I wanna have it as optimized as possible for video editing rather than for gaming. And then go ahead and click Download. 
All right, so once that downloads, we'll open that up and we'll install that driver. All right, everything looks good there. And we'll finalize the installation. And then we'll keep moving forward with the process of getting everything set up and optimized. All right, so it's going to open up this window, but this isn't the window I really need to access. Um, I'm going to close this window out and then I'll go to my desktop and I'm going to open the NVIDIA control panel by right clicking and then click NVIDIA control panel. And then I'm going to go up to manage and I'm going to go to specific program. And this is where we'll add Premiere Pro in the future. So that way Premiere Pro uses our NVIDIA driver to get better performance out of the program. Now we're going to go ahead and download Adobe Creative Cloud. So go to Google, download the Creative Cloud Downloader. And if you've yet to sign up for an account for Creative Cloud, you're welcome to head down in the description below. I've included a link there as well. That is an affiliate link. And then once you get signed up for Adobe Creative Cloud, you can head back on over and, and go through this process with me. Now, personally, I only subscribe to Premiere Pro from Adobe, and then I use Affinity Photo as my Photoshop replacement, which is $50, which is an awesome replacement because if you're using Photoshop, you're paying for it on a monthly basis, where I only have to pay for Affinity Photo once, which is absolutely wonderful. And we'll go through the download process of that next. Okay, so now that Premiere Pro has installed, we're gonna go to back to those Manage 3D settings, click Program Settings, select Premiere Pro, and add this to the list of programs that we want the NVIDIA drivers to be utilized on. So that way we can get the most performance out of Premiere Pro from our NVIDIA GPU. Okay, so if you're interested in Affinity Photo, you can get it at affinity.serif, and I'll include a link in the description below. And we'll just go through this download process real quick. Now, I've already purchased it, so I'm just going to go to Buy Now anyway, though, and I will click Free Trial. And then I will input my information because I am an existing customer. And then I'll click download now. Now, once I download it, I will open it up. I will install the program. And then after it installs, I'll go ahead and input my software key in order to finish the registration for the account. All right, we'll accept the licensing agreement and we'll open up into Affinity Photo. All right, the last thing that you can do, um, I personally did not do this for this build because I checked the BIOS and it was basically up to date. It was maybe one or two iterations out, but you can go and search your motherboard manufacturer and model and download the most up-to-date BIOS. A lot of people sway newcomers away from doing this because if you do mess anything up in a BIOS update, it can brick your motherboard. And what that means is you're basically unable to use it unless you can do a BIOS flashback, um, which some come with built-in flashbacks on the motherboard, some do not. So as a newcomer, it's recommended not to do that. I didn't do that for this build specifically because I didn't feel it was quite necessary. My motherboard isn't running any issues. It's not laggy. It's not messing up in any way. So I'm just going to leave the BIOS as is for the moment. But I wanted to point this out just in case you wanted to do a BIOS update. If you're curious about any of the things we've discussed in this video, there are show notes in the description below. You can head down there, click any of those links that I've provided for you to make sure that you can get your system set up quickly, easily, and without any snags. All right, so your computer should be now officially set up and ready to go. In the next video, we're gonna look at how to optimize your computer better for video editing, such as drive setups, Premiere Pro settings, and more. So keep an eye on the series as we're gonna have more videos coming your way soon. Keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here on the next video.